Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining so early in the morning. And this being the first session, there's like a lot of pressure. <laughs> okay, so my name's Trisha, as she mentioned, and I'll be talking about opening up African data. So this talk was actually meant to be presented by my colleague Emma Kisa, but uh, due to visa constraints, she was unable to join us. So I just really hope I can do justice to showcase the real hard work she's put through um, in her project, Open Africa. Okay, a bit about me. My name's Trisha. I work for a nonprofit organization called Code for Africa, where I'm the senior data product manager and I manage the organization's data lab. I come from a city called Durban, which is found on the east coast of South Africa. It took me about 32 hours to get here, but I'm just so excited to be here. Okay, um, so I love data, I love visualizations, I love maps, I love hackathons. So if you have a hackathon, please invite me. Okay, um, yeah, but most importantly, what I love is the impact that data can have in Africa. And not only in Africa, being here, it's, it's the first time I'm, I'm on, in the South America. And it actually shows me that Africa, you know, they also always mention the global south. So problems you see in Africa, I'm seeing similar issues here in Argentina. So data has this, uh, has the, can make this impact in the global south. So I just want to take a look at how Code for Africa creates change and impact. Okay, so Code for Africa, we also known as CFA. We're the continent's largest civic technology um, organization, and we work on data journalism and open data projects, um, to name a few. Okay, uh, we have our team comprises uh, journalists, data analysts, technologists, designers, distributed all through the African uh, continent. We have various initiatives, so one of them being WANA Data, and Wana Data is a network of women-only journalists, data scientists, designers, um, technologists. Okay. Then, interesting, we have um, a network called African Drone. And they use drone technology for mapping and storytelling. Another uh, program at the organization is called Census Africa. And what they do is they build and deploy air quality sensors that now collects data. Uh, we also have a PESA check team. So this is our fact-checking initiative. And uh, they operate in 13 countries, uh, and they conduct a lot of fact checks. And uh, lastly, we have uh, an iLab team that does forensic investigations, such as social media investigations. Let's look at some of the data challenges that we are facing in Africa, and maybe many of you can relate to it. This is our reality. So often, data is very difficult to find. If we do find data by any chance, it's either stuck on a website and you can't get it out, or it's stuck in a PDF report and then you have to scrape it. Then you get a scenario as these pictures. So these are actually the government gazette offices in Kenya and Nigeria. Um, these files or hard copy documents you see, they, they are actually broken shelves and leaking roofs. And these documents are actually government gazettes. Another issue that we face is data sharing. And it's not only on the African continent, but internationally as well. So because I'm a data person, and when I read a news story, and a journalist is quoting a statistic, okay, I'm always interested to know where did this come from. I want to read further about it. Okay, So sometimes they do mention, they'll say a report from the World Health Organization. okay. Uh, sometimes they state the exact name of the report. Um, 
if we're lucky, really lucky, they will hyperlink to that report. But often when it's hyperlinked, you click on the link, you get a 404 error, <laughs> or you get some sort of error that this file does not exist. Okay. So what we're doing at Open, I mean, what we're doing at Code for Africa is we built a tool called Open Africa that's meant to help solve this problem. Open Africa is Africa's largest volunteer-driven open data portal. So it's built on CCAN, and I've, yesterday I've heard so many people speak about CCAN and DCAN. So yeah, it was built in CCAN, and I think it was built in 2014 or 2015, so, so quite a while ago. Okay. Um, the, the purpose of Open Africa is for us to reuse and, and share data. So for example, Kenya has an annual economic survey report that they publish. Now this report has loads and loads of important data indicators. The issue is it's only in a PDF. So me, if I am doing an investigation, a story, if I'm just working with that data, and I'm interested in a specific data set, for example, um, healthcare workers, okay? I'll then go in and I'll scrape the data. But I'm a bit more of an advanced data user. I have the skill set to allow me to scrape the data. I can use tabular and other tools. So once I have that data, I can get it into my spreadsheet. From my spreadsheet, I can conduct my analysis, I can create my visualization. You know, I'm a happy chap. And then what I further do is I share that data or upload that data to Open Africa. So now if, if anyone else is interested in that data on healthcare workers in Kenya, they don't need to go through all the steps that I went through to go and scrape that data. And maybe they don't even have that skills. They can simply download the data and use it for their further analysis. In this way, we are sharing data and reusing data in quite a productive way. We have a few main users of Open Africa. This also won an award. It won the 2021 Sigma Awards and it was the first African project to ever win uh, the Sigma Awards. Okay, uh, like I said, Open Africa was built around 2015. Okay, um, so we have, a f we have a future plan in mind. Okay, let me just go through a, a few future steps and after this, or even if we have time now, because I, I know lo a lot of people are working on open data portals, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how we can improve the product. Okay, future plans. We have a basic three-step plan. So firstly, to scrape, clean, and upload. So we, we continuously want to do this, get more data up on various topics, but in particular, elections. We aspire Open Africa to be an African election data monitor. So your one-stop place for election data. Then our next step is tell. And by tell, I mean we want to create an insights blog. And in that insights blog, we want to take a particular data set from Open Africa and write about how it can be used or um, write about how it has been used for our users to get an understanding of the power of data. It's not just a CSV document sitting in there, but tell them what can you do with it. And lastly, use. We want the data on the platform to be used in more impact-driven projects by not only our organizer, organization, but also our partners. We'd also absolutely love to have an intensive campaign on open data and why sharing data is important with particular attention to open Africa. We're also in the middle of a redesign because, I mean, 
what was designed in 2015 does not look great right now. So we're really looking forward to that as well. Okay, so if you want to know more about Code for Africa's open data uh, projects, just give us a follow on Twitter. And yeah, let's go for some questions. I'm going to ask that you speak in the mic so that it can be recorded. Um, I, I have a lot of questions I'm going to ask like one or two, so I'm just trying to get to it. Um, most importantly, um, part of my duties um, is data acquisition. Do you um, allow other uh, repositories to harvest data from Open Africa for discoverability of your content? Um, yeah, we do have the CCAN API that people request for, and we do give them access to that, yeah. Yes, yes. So, so a, a, another thing to that is what we try to do as well is reverse. We try to get their data, but the issue is if so, that gets broken quite easily. So we have a bunch of broken harvesters that we need to fix. Um, so, what you were talking about the portfolio and the portion of tell. This is my last question. You were talking about the portion of tell in your goals. Yeah. Are you finding out if they don't, for example, everybody cites data like they should. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how else are you gathering information about what people are doing with your data so that you can share that? So uh, mm -hmm. I'll let you answer from there. I don't have to. Yeah. So impact reporting is something that we also want to try and get down to. Because what we notice is that people, so we have, we use uh, Google Analytics and it tells us the most uh, downloaded data set, et cetera. But we're not seeing um, the output. Where are they using the data? And we were thinking of having a survey, so when you're downloading the data, have a survey um, asking, what do you want to use the data for? Problem is, the survey has to be optional because if you tell them, if you only, only, uh, you'll only get the data if you fill in the survey, that does not make it open data because you're restricting access. So you have to make the survey optional, but are many people going to fill in something that's optional? That's, an, that's another problem, yeah. About Makoko, 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 I don't remember. Um, uh, do you ask people living in that area if they wanted their place, I mean, their place to be mapped? Mm -hmm. and. I'm thinking about potential violent conflicts or other reasons why they wouldn't want their uh, home or houses or businesses to be mapped. Um, maybe they don't have internet, they don't use it themselves. How do you manage that part? You know? Okay, so this is a very interesting and complex uh, situation. We had a team member go in and do community negotiation. He had to go have meetings with the chief uh, on multiple occasions, because you can't just go, in, within Africa, within villages, you can't just go in and do what you want. You need to negotiate with chiefs. Uh, you have to have town hall meetings. There's like, um, I wouldn't like to use, we didn't really like pay them, but they expect like some sort of, um, uh, <laughs> like gift, you know, that you take to them. Uh, they were very happy about it because the place was not on a map. And if you're not in the map, government is not taking you, uh, holding, I mean, is not taking you into account when it comes to planning. There was also a lot of eviction taking place uh, in the place because literally they were invisible and the city was just like, we don't want to see you because you're a slum. So by putting the people uh, on the map, it brought visibility to them and they can be counted for, and government can then provide um, uh, services for them. Yeah. yeah. We have one minute. We're at, okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.